Well, um, while the presentation setting up, I will go ahead and get started um, so we can use the most of our time. My name is Emily. I'm the Associate Director in the Study Abroad Office, and I was lucky enough to visit this program. Um, let's see, it was back in 2018, I believe it was, um, a couple years ago. And um, so I took, while well, I was there, so I took a lot of photos and video footage to share with you guys. Um, and Frankie, do you mind introducing yourself um, when you went abroad and maybe if you wanna share like a high and the low from your study abroad experience? Um, yeah, sure. So my name is Frankie, I'm a junior here at Geneseo. Um, I studied abroad summer of 2019, which would have been my freshman year here. And what was the other thing you wanted me to say? Um, well, uh, what's your major? Remind me of what your major is. History education. History education. Okay. And um, I guess oh, another question before I jump into the next one is, um, did you know any Spanish before you went? I knew a little from high school, but it, I mean, nothing comparable to what I learned there. Okay. Okay. Just kind of gauging where you started from. And then... Um, what was like a favorite part about being in Peru and what was like a challenge for you? Favorite part was probably just experiencing the different culture. Uh, the nice thing about um, where we were in Peru was that it was in a more traditional setting. So we weren't in like a modernized city that they have down there. We were in like kind of a more traditional town that had a lot of Spanish and like uh, ancient Inca values. So I was right in the middle of like just that traditional experience. And I think um, the hardest part for me, I guess, was when I, when I first got there, I experienced some altitude sickness, mm -hmm. um, but uh, my host mom took care of me and I was fine by the next day. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so this PowerPoint's still taking a few minutes, but um, just to kind of explain um, a little bit about this program, um, we work with a school called Academia Latino Americana de Espanol, and they are first and foremost a language school. They are not a university, they are not a college, um, and so they serve stu students other than study abroad students. Um, you know, you might have kind of people from all walks of life coming there, the students on gap year, you'll have um, U.S. military send some um, people down there for language learning. Um, they, you might have um, a Spanish teacher who's down there to brush up in some Spanish. Um, so you kind of get a real mix. Um, the family that runs the school, they own, they own um, multiple locations. And they, the family though, it, themselves are Ecuadorian. So their, their main kind of school and main kind of building is in Ecuador, in Quito, Ecuador. Um, in their site there. And then they also have a location in uh, Cusco, Peru, and then also in Bolivia. We uh, currently do not work with the Bolivia location and um, we send students to both Cusco and Quito. And um, depending on the length of the program, if you go for more than three weeks, um, you, could, you could possibly do part of your time in Cusco and part of your time in Quito. Uh, which is a really cool aspect of this program. Um, uh, you can study abroad in this program during the semester, uh, the summer, or even the winter intercession. So you can go for it as short as three weeks. Um, and actually, I want to hear from um, Kristen and Thomas and Leon. If you guys could drop in maybe the chat uh, when you're thinking about going and if you have a preference, uh, perhaps for the um, the term, uh, I'm sorry, the location um, that you want to study at. Um, then we can kind of um, direct this conversation to what would be most useful for you. Um, if you go to the, the summer, you can go for three to 12 weeks. Um, and a really interesting aspect of this program is um, the volunteerism or the internship opportunity that we'll talk about. Um, so I got the, the PowerPoint finally uh, pulled up. So um, as I go through this, uh, Frank, Frankie, feel free to jump in at any point in time. Um, 
and I would be happy to, um, uh, you know, jump in and, and share your, what your thoughts are and, on any of this. Um, and I was just reading what everybody's thinking. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so I think you guys are all looking at terms that are well enough in the future that um, I hope hopefully we'll be past the worst of this pandemic and uh, we'll be on to better things. And um, so I feel really good about spring and summer 2022. So let's hope that that uh, is the case. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. Um, so the locations are quite different, um, but they're also quite similar. They have uh, both um, Ecuador and Peru have a very much shared history from what I, at least I know. Um, they have a lot in common culturally um, uh, as far as the Incas and then the, the colonization by the Spanish. Um, and so uh, you have, they're, they're similar in the cultural field where they, they seem different, at least to me, was the feel of the cities. Um, both of them are very large cities with very large populations. Um, but you can see that Quito, Ecuador is much bigger than Cusco. Um, and uh, Quito is the capital of Ecuador, whereas Cusco is not. Um, both of them are very mountainous. Um, I know Frankie mentioned being up in the mountains and having elevation sickness, that's something that you might have to deal with in both locations. Um, Ecuador, as the name implies, is right up by the equator. And so the temperatures are pretty consistent throughout the whole year. It's pretty, you know, it's nice 70s during the day, it gets kind of cooler at night. You don't have the extremes, which is lovely. Um, Cusco, um, they have seasons just like we do and so depending on when you go you can get a variance um and i have heard that peru is one of the most diverse countries in the world in terms of um, ecosystems that they have in the country um so you know where you would be in in, in cusco you are very much in the mountains but you have right outside of you kind of more of a um, the, the amazon kind of environment um, when you get more towards Machu Picchu, um, then you and in the region north of Cusco, the Amazon's really up 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 north more, I think, uh, right there's a river. So, um, but like more of that jungle kind of environment, I guess, is more what I'm speaking to. And then up um, over here, you have like the Amazon. But right outside of Cusco, on my way to go to um, Machu Picchu, when I was visiting, you have mountains, snow-capped mountains. Um, so you got like quite the range of environments. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, their seasons are pretty much opposite of ours um, in Cusco. Um, so that if you're there during the summer, it's their winter. Um, what was that experience like being there during the summer? Like environment, like the environmental, the climate, the weather. Okay, so. When I went, it was the summer here, but it was the winter down in Cusco because I went in June. Um, it didn't get that cold really during the day. It usually stayed in the 60s or 70s. So perfect weather for doing stuff and just walking outside or doing whatever. But um, at night it did get pretty cold. It got well into, well into the 30s most of the time. It never snowed. It doesn't really snow in Cusco, but it did usually get into the 30s at night. And um, the one thing I do have to say about that is that most of the houses don't have heat there. So um, if you do stay there, your bedrooms will get pretty cold, but um, bring bring a lot of blankets if you go if you go to Cusco, that's, that's very helpful. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, and like the feel I think is different. Like I said, like being in the capital city, Quito has all sorts of like international restaurants and, and uh, in Cusco, you you got to you would see some chains in the in the main plaza. You could see you know a McDonald's and Starbucks and and whatnot. But for the most part, uh, you didn't see too many of the chains beyond that. Um, 
So you get a little bit more of the feeling for home, but it, certainly you're not, you're definitely not home and in, in, in Quito there's enough of a difference where, you know, there's so, so much to culturally learn about the environment and about the different location. Um, but it, it does have some of the more creature comforts, I guess, is what I, I'm trying to get at. Um, so uh, yeah, in, in Ecuador, of course, there's so much to see and do there too. Um, you know, they got the cloud forest, you got volcanoes, inactive volcanoes, but volcanoes around the city of, of Quito. People go hiking on them. Um, there's, there's the middle of the world. Um, so both of them are great locations. Um, I'm gonna try sharing a video I took from Peru. Hopefully this comes through okay. It's a short video, but this is in the main plaza in Peru. And you can see like a lot of the Spanish colonial in influence there. In fact, in that one museum on the left, it's a, it's a museum, it's an art museum. They have um, a picture of the Last Supper, a, a painting of the Last Supper. Did you see this, Frankie? I didn't see that, no. I was just um, looking at the, the cathedral there. It's really, it's really <laughs> pretty if you get the chance to go in there. A lot of cool uh, paintings, a lot of cool architecture in there. Oh, I see, I think I missed that one. Um, but the the the, pit, the painting the Last Supper, in order to try to for the Spanish um, you know colonizers to try to kind of speak to the locals, they they have a pit they have a guinea pig, in the 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 uh, in the painting of the Last Supper because that is a traditional Peruvian dish is uh, guinea pig, um, so. Um, so here's some. Um, of the sites just around uh, Cusco, just to kind of give you a sense. Um, this, this is from the, the one on the top left, just from the Sacred Valley. Um, you can see the traditional dress. Um, then, you, you know, just some paintings and uh, art around the city. Uh, this was just a soccer match going on and you can see the mountains around the city kind of uh, in this photo. Um, to the bottom, you have uh, Machu Picchu, you have um, in the middle, these are, like I said, the snow-capped mountains that you see on your way to Machu Picchu. So you, you can see like the diversity of the environment. Um, and then again, this is the main square. Um, this is a video from Ecuador. This is of kind of their main hub in, the, in downtown Ecuador as well. Um, and you'll see the Spanish influences here as well. One thing that's cool about both cities, especially I saw this in Cusco, when you walk around the city, you see remains of the Incan architecture um, surrounding the city. They, the, the Incans were, had some really, really um, good architectural techniques. So you can still see remains of their buildings uh, holding up strong despite earthquakes and whatnot because of how they constructed things. Um, and here's some photos from around uh, Ecuador. This is uh, actually right off from that main square that you saw there. This is a district with a lot of like restaurants and bars. Um, this is a church, one of the main churches in uh, Quito and it is completely plated in gold on the inside. It's uh, gorgeous, uh, something to see. Um, this is a view from um, kind of an overlook, overlooking down into the city of Quito. Um, same with this. And then the picture on the bottom right is from this really famous art museum that's there. And actually our students have the, in, the opportunity to intern at this art museum if they're interested. A lot of times they need help with like translation services or tours. Um, and so it's, it was just really beautiful. Um, so this, picture here is actually the Ecuador, the, the main building in, in Quito. Um, I had a picture of the Cusco location and then after I left, they moved their location. So Frankie, I know you got to study at the new building. What was the, the school building like um, and like your commute to get to, um, to the school? 
Um, so for me, it was about 20 minutes walking distance to get um, from my uh, host house to the school. Um, so the what they do in the school, it, it's kind of like a bunch of little like office rooms. And um, what's good about that is that when you're there and you're taking classes, the, the class sizes are really small. Like it's only usually, I think the most students I had in a class was six at one time. Um, so it's the, the learning there is really personal. It's really, um, they're great teachers too. They have great pedagogical methods. Um, trying to think what else. And then I know in the Peru one, there's like a little courtyard too, which was really mm. cool to see. Yeah. Um same with like at the Ecuador school. So your um, all your host families, they try to keep within a 30 minute commute. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And they have like a courtyard as well where you can hang out and do homework, kind of hang out between classes. Um, and the, uh, next to the school is a restaurant that actually the students can get a voucher for, for some like um, lunch or dinner and you, it's it's discounted right for those lunches and dinners. Um, so um, it's a really nice location. Um, like Frankie was saying, your classes are incredibly small. Um, it, your, a classroom space is almost basically what you would envision, like maybe an office space for your professors that if you met, you know, have met with your professors um, during their office hours, it's not much bigger than an office, and they have a little table, and there's, you know, two to six students, maybe per class, and, um, and Frankie, correct me if this was different for you, but every week, you have a different instructor for each course. Um, yes, the only time I, I did have the same instructor, I think, the last two weeks, but most of the time, it was a different instructor. An instructor. Yeah, so you do each class is um, three weeks and each class is three credits and you kind of build on top of each other. Um, and so you would go and do your one class um, and you meet, I think, about four hours a day. Um, and then usually you have like your morning or your afternoon off um, or you could do your internship or your volunteer placement in the morning or afternoon. And your um, if you have a short break during those four hours. And each week for the, the three week course, you have a different teacher. And the, their kind of thought processes behind that is that you're not just learning from one teacher, you're getting to hear different accents, you're different, getting different um, you know, techniques that the, the teachers are presenting. And at the end of each week, the teachers meet and they discuss each student and they hand off to the next teacher. Um, and uh, so that's, that's kind of how that, that works. Um, we do offer beginner, intermediate, or advanced levels of Spanish. Um, we, the, the, for, if you're a Geneseo student specifically, um, there's only a few courses that our Spanish department will accept from them, and that includes indigenous cultures and advanced writing, um, or advanced grammar. Um, so, uh, and then you can usually sometimes do the internship or a volunteer placement. So you're not going to get more than about nine credits um, if you're looking to go for the semester and you already have advanced level Spanish. Uh, the, our Spanish department for Geneseo students would, you know, prefer to steer you in another direction, but you certainly could. We have had advanced Spanish speakers go and maybe they're also an IR major or maybe they work on some gen ed credit or some elective credit while they there. So they take the three to nine credits plus a couple more to get the, the 12 to 15 credits that they need for the semester. Obviously during the summer it's really easy if you're at the advanced level um, because there you know there's a couple course offerings that you can certainly take. Um, for you know, if you're a non Geneseo student, of course, you can take any of their 300 level courses. This is just a Geneseo specific thing. Um, and um, we have beginner, everything from beginner up. Um, so you don't need to know any Spanish to go on this program. If you do know Spanish, you'll take a placement test once you arrive to place in the crush level of Spanish. Um, and on their website, 
you can find um, um, information about their course offerings. Um, it's under the university credit courses. Um, and that's where you can find information on what they have on offer. Uh, we have the we have the syllabi, or we can get the syllabi if we don't already have them. If you need them for any of the classes, there is a brief course description, but it's not very detailed. So a lot of times for course approval process, you'll want to have um, a little bit more detail than that to get your courses approved. Um, but they come in as transfer credit um, to Geneseo. You get a transcript supplement, and then if you're not a Geneseo student, we send it to you, your university. If you are a Geneseo student, we'll put it in your courses. We'll transfer in your courses based on the course approval form you'll do for our office. Um, so that's how that works. Um, like I said, a staple of this program is the opportunity to intern or volunteer. Um, just recently, they've kind of they have an extra cost now for the this internship or volunteer option. It's not a lot of money, but there is a little bit of an extra cost now to participate in an internship. Um, and you can do this for credit. Um, our cost sheets, we I just updated the summer cost sheets when I wasn't sure where, where things stood for this summer. And so you can kind of get a sense of what that looks like. Um, we hope to get fall cost sheets up here and then in the coming weeks. Um, but you can get an idea of like some of the places you can intern by clicking, going on their website and clicking on the internships. But you can do things like help at an orphanage, an after school program. Um, you can help at a school. You can do help with a sports program, a midwives program, a, a hospital, um, botanical gardens, therapeutic writing, amongst many other things. Um, Frankie, did you volunteer while you were there? I did, yep. Yeah. And um, you don't have to volunteer um, every week that you're there. You can do, like, if you're staying six weeks, you can just do the three weeks if you want for volunteering and you'll still get the credit. Um, what I did was I volunteered in an after school program and um, kind of uh, a little far from where I was, but I was able to take the bus there and uh, get there within like 20 to 30 minutes. And it was just like an after school program for, I believe, like, three to eight year olds. It was um, their mothers um, worked in like the market and the after school program was upstairs and there was just a teacher that watched them and played games with them. So I was able to like interact with them and just um, play with them and hang around with them. It was really cool. Hmm. Very cool. Um, yeah, they, there's just a lot of really good options and yeah, just depending on what you're looking for, they can kind of pair you up. They uh, there's an internship coordinator, so if you need help, you, you're having, um, you know, you, you need to check in with somebody about how things are going, you know, there's resources there um, to make sure you're getting the most out of your internship. Um, going back to academics real quick, I forgot to mention um, Professor Costa de Moraes. That's this guy right here. <laughs> um, he is a Spanish department. Uh, professor in the Spanish department here at Geneseo. He is wonderful. He actually traveled to Peru and Ecuador with me. Um, he is our faculty uh, appointment person at Geneseo. So for any Geneseo students who are, are interested in this program, he is a really good resource for talking through how the academic component of this program will work. And so very happy to put you in touch with him, um, you know, if you're looking for more information on the academic course transfer, that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to have Frankie talk about his time doing the excursions that were included. This is included no matter whether you go for the winter intercession, for the um, summer, for the semester, you always get this inter uh, excursion included. So um, yes, for us, I went, I, I went with another student. So we were able to go to all four of those places. Um, the first one, the Cusco City Walking Tour, they just, um, they kind of take you around the city of Cusco. They show you the, um, the cool places, like um, just the cool historical places and the nice uh, site view places. They took us like really far 
up a mountain once and we were able to see like a whole view of the city um and we learned about some history there too um what else uh sacred ballad and uh that's called it's called sexy woman they're a sexy woman's kind of they don't really know what sexy woman was used for but it was used in the Inca culture it's kind of like a fortress they think but it's really cool it's made out of these huge gigantic rocks um and that's part of um i think it's part of the cusco city walking tour mm -hmm. uh, sacred valley was really cool too that that they take you kind of outside of cusco and you get to see the um the different Inca ruins that are still around the Cusco area. And then um, for Machu Picchu, that takes that takes like a whole day. Um, you wake up at like maybe three or four in the morning, you um, head on a, I think a train, or you get in a car, You then you head on a train and then it takes you to um, a city which is right near Machu Picchu. So you can spend a little bit of your day in that little town and experience stuff there. And then you take an excursion. Um, Agua Calientes, right? Yes, Aguas Calientes. And they have hot springs there, which is- Yeah, that's um, cool. Yeah. That's really cool. But um, yeah, it was it was really cool. It was like surreal seeing Machu Picchu in person. It was amazing. Um, when you're there too, the, I don't know why I really like this, but they have like llamas right in the middle of Machu Picchu and you can go right up to them and like pet them and stuff, which is interesting. Um, they're all owned by the government for some reason, but um, that was an interesting fact they told me, but it was definitely a cool thing to see. Um, and then Ecuador, you get to do a city tour of Quito, um, but then you also get to do the Cloud Forest. Um, Quilo, I'm going to mispronounce this, please forgive me, Quilolota Lake, Cotopaxi Volcano, which is right outside of um, Quito. Um, and then the middle of the world monument. Um, so there's there's a lot of really cool places. I can't speak to those quite as well because I haven't been on any of those, uh, haven't been to any of those locations, but. Um. Um, another thing too um, about the excursion. So usually um, at, the, at the Cusco one, they have like a guy that specializes in the different things you can do around the Cusco area. He's right in the school and you can meet with him. Um, for your excursions. And usually every Friday night, he took us to a different place in Cusco. Mm. So one time we went to get um, picarones, which is like a dessert that they have um, in Peru. It's um, a fried sweet potato. It's kind of tastes like a, like a donut. It looks like an onion ring, but kind of tastes like a donut. It's very sweet. Um, where else? He took us once to a restaurant to have anticuchos, which is uh, cow heart. Um, mm what else a lot of different just small things he took us to he took us to a little market one friday night um so it was cool um yeah the school puts on like a lot of activities too so sometimes they'll have like a dance lesson or a cooking class um at either locations um so i know when i was in ecuador i got to kind of participate in a cooking class where you got to make um uh, more traditional quesadillas, not quite like what you are, uh, not quite what like you would see here. So, um, yeah, it was it was really cool. Um, uh, Frank, Frankie, did you travel outside of the excursions? Did you get to go to some other areas of Peru while you were there? I did. Um, the last week I was there, I actually went into the Amazon rainforest. It's um, the part that I was in. I was in a, a Manu Park, which is about seven to eight hours away from Cusco, I think, it's because of all the twisty roads that they have to take. But uh, that was a that was a really cool experience. I totally, I totally recommend it. Like it was probably, probably one of the coolest things that I did there was seeing the Amazon. And um, we had a, we kind of had a tour guide and he um, took us through it. And we stayed in a couple different places in the Amazon. One was kind of in this little town right in the middle of the Amazon. And then another one were was cottages like right in the middle of the forest. Um, we didn't have like access to electricity in those cottages or anything like that, but it was only for like a day or two. And it was, it was a really cool experience. Yeah, there's a lot of like travel agencies right in town that like I know a lot of times students will go and book like a weekend trip through it because it's one of the easier ways to get around. Um, there is, you know, there's bus transportation and there's, I, 
right? In Cusco, for example, you can fly to Iquitos, which is another popular area that enter the Amazon. Um, I know students have gone to the Rainbow Mountains, which look phenomenal. I've never been, but they, you know, these big sand dunes that are all sorts of beautiful colors. Um, I know students have gone, um, you know, there's a, a lake region near near uh, Cusco that students have traveled to. Is that Lake, lake Chiti? I'm gonna lake probably- Chitaca. Chitaca, yeah, that's what I thought, okay, yeah. Um, Lima, the capital of Cusco, is quite a track away. Um, you probably fly would fly there, but it's right on the coast. Um, you might fly through Lima on your way down or on your way back. Um, and, and same with uh, with Ecuador. You know, you you can easily take a bus, get out to the coast of Ecuador. Um, there's an Amazon region that we've had students go. There's actually at the Ecuador location, there's, um, I wanna say it's called Atil Atilvio or there's a town called something of that um, nature where students can actually go volunteer and help teach English. And it's, it's a very much a traditional, um, a lot of the, the people who live there, um, you know, may even be limited in the Spanish. They speak um, Quechuan um there which is uh, the native language um and actually you can take at ecuador you can take i hope i'm not saying that wrong but uh Quechuan, Quechua, um Quechua. 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 okay um so you can you can take that language there as well um so uh that's something that's kind of really unique um so the host families are, and this is supposed to say vetted, not vetted. The host families are vetted by academia, and um, you do have a, a host family preference form you do as part of the application process, and they match you up. And your host family could be anyone from um, a family with kids um, to, um, it could be an older couple, a retired couple. Um, who is your host family? Who would you stay with? Um, I stayed, well, I don't remember their last names, but I know I stayed, my host uh, mother's name, she was like the main person. Her name was uh, Consuelo. She kind of lived, she lived outside of the main area, which was, I said it was, it was really cool, but I think they were like Elza Moras, I think their last name was. Okay. And she um, basically, she was like the main person of the house. And then um, she had a boyfriend come over every once in a while. And then she had two daughters. Okay. Um, when I got to visit Cusco, I actually stayed with one of the host families that sometimes our students stay with. This is actually their house up here in the top right photo. Um, yeah, and it was a mother, uh, her husband, and then their two like grown kids. And they, um, the mother and the husband didn't know English. The two grown kids knew a little bit of English. Um, I knew very little Spanish, so it was helpful that they knew a little English, but this gives you the opportunity to practice your Spanish at home um, and kind of get that cultural experience. Um, in in uh, Cusco, you get breakfast and lunch included, so they have a big main meal for lunch. Everybody comes home for lunch as part of the cultural experience, you know, dining around the table, sharing that meal. Um, in Quito, it's you get your breakfast and your dinner. Dinner is the main meal. Um, so it just kind of depends on your location. Um, I think, I'm trying to remember, I think uh, I got to visit some of the host families in, in both locations. You have, a, you have a single room, you might have a shared bathroom, um, but this kind of shows you what some of the host families look like, the, 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 their homes. Yeah, so um, yeah, most of the host families, um, they don't know English. They're obviously their main language is Spanish, but um, I, honestly, it was very beneficial because um, when I left the school, I was still speaking Spanish to my host family when I was at home, and it was kind of awkward at first because I didn't really, I didn't remember any Spanish from high school. But within the next couple weeks, uh, I started talking to them more, and I could have full-on conversations with them in Spanish. Um. 
And yeah, it just provides you that home environment, the people, the locals who know what's what, they, they're they watching out for you, they're kind of, you know, there to help you out and, and help you make the most of your experience. Um, so the program dates largely reflect uh, Genesea's program dates. So if you go in the fall, you go from late August to mid-December. In the spring, it's early January to early May. Um, they are, it's a, I think the semester is technically 17 weeks. You get a two weeks of vacation built in if you go for the semester. Um, and like they said, so for the summer, there's four sessions. So you can kind of choose what works for you. So you could decide to go right smack in the middle of summer if that's best for you, or you go at the end of summer. So that's, that's the nice flexibility. Um, and the winter intercession is just a three week program that you would go from late December to mid January. Um, you always apply the semester before. So if you went for the summer, fall or academic year, you would apply for this March 1st. I saw a lot of um, summer 2022. So you would apply next March uh, for next March 1st. Um, and then for spring, I saw a lot of spring you would apply this October for, by October 1st. And what happens is you apply, um, you if you're accepted by Genesea, we nominate you, we help you with the application process, any potential visa process, um, and we go through pre-departure orientation and we get you all, all set and ready to go. Um, but like I said, during the semester, remember, like I said, this is a language program, so students are constantly coming and going. So while there'll be other university students who will be there for the semester with you, um, that's the nature of this program. There's always students coming and going. Um, so um, that's something that makes this program unique um, and a little different than other study abroad programs. Um, we usually, I would say, especially during the summer, we usually have a handful of students on this program. Um, during the semester, you know, we could have some semesters where we have three or four students and some where we don't have any students. So it just kind of depends um, whether you would be with another SUNY student um, on this program. Um, the cost information, like I said, we're looking to get fall, we're supposed to get um, academic year 21-22 up. Uh, probably in the next month or so, so you would be able to find it up here. Um, summer 2021 is up because we were, like I said, hopeful that we could still run the summer program. So you can um, go to our website um, to see these cost sheets. Um, summer 21 will give you a good guide for summer 2022, and then the, obviously the semester um, option will be up here shortly. Um, so they also go by a weird semester thing. So when you when you see me put it up, it'll be probably just for the fall because we'll have to do a new class sheet um, over the summer. But um, all of our programs have a $20 application charge. The study abroad program differential varies based on the program. But in the case of this program, it includes your room, two meals a day, um, airport pickup drop off, local excursions, admin fee, health insurance, so you're looking at about $5,890, um, maybe a little bit more than that now, but something along those lines. Um, you pay standard tuition and the college fee. You don't have to pay any of the other fees that you would normally pay if you were here. And then there's other estimated expenses, including the visa fee, airfare, personal expenses, meals, and a passport. So you're looking um, at just about 14,000 to be in this program. They say all in to be a residential student at Geneseo. It's about twelve to thirteen thousand to be here for a semester. So you can see that this program is pretty close um, cost, similarly to being here for the semester. So that's a really nice aspect of this program. Um, and then the summer program or the winter intercession program. Um, just to kind of give you a sense. It depends on how many credits you're doing. Um, a lot of our students do six credits and let's say you were doing just without the internship. Um, you're looking to add uh, about um, seven grand in total for the, for the summer. Um, 
So gives you kind of a sense of what that would what that would cost. We do have scholarships on our website. We give out scholarships of between five hundred dollars and a grand based on financial need. Um, and then financial aid typically applies, um, especially for the semester. We can use financial aid um, to help cover your costs um, as long as you're taking degree applicable courses as if you were here. Um, for the summer, you have to take at least six credits typically to um, receive financial aid and it does reduce your overall aid package for the year. But if you're a Pell Grant recipient, you can get extra aid during the summer. Um, this is a, I, I thought this was a lovely shot, but just the, the sun setting over the hills and this is in Cusco. Um, this is such a lovely city. Um, so I'm gonna leave this open now to, um, for questions. And if you have anything else, thank you that you think would be helpful to share. Um, I guess just any questions that you have, I can try to answer them for you. And I see, uh, Professor Maurice, are you here? Maybe not. I just wanted to. Any questions, Kristen or Thomas? Um, yeah, I have a quick question just to make sure. Um... Uh, as far as the academic perspective goes, I have a full understanding. So as far as like um, making credit that we take transferable to Geneseo, we would fill out a like course transfer credit form and like yeah. just work out with you guys like one-on-one. -on -one. Yep, so you'll, you'll um, do, it's on our, our website, but it's a, it's a course approval form for study abroad. And um, you would, anything for your degree, you would meet with your department chair or Actually, specifically for this program, you would meet with Professor Murray, uh, Rice, and he would help you through what things would transfer back in as um, out of here. If you want to share your piece on that. I, I apologize. I was stuck in another meeting, but I'm glad at least I could come for the last minutes. Yeah. We were just talking about the course transfer and, and Thomas was asking how he would how he would go about doing the course transfer. And I was explaining how he would meet with you for the, the Spanish courses specifically. Okay. And then yeah, I mean, um, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Um the thing with the academia both in Peru and Ecuador is that um there are not too many upper level courses that you can take. I, I believe Emily might have touched on that point, right, Emily? Mm -hmm. But still, they can make a difference. I just approved the waiver for a student who is actually minoring in Latin American studies. And he was able to use one of the 300 level courses he took in, in, in Ecuador to complete his minor. So, um, I mean, although there are not too many options at the 300 level, they might still be make the difference between having another minor stamped on your on your curriculum. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or? Yeah, I have a few actually. Um, so the first one, I just want to like, how is the internet like? Uh, um, connection like Wi-Fi connection over in well I guess both of them because I'm interested in both of them so I'll let us um, <laughs> yes so um, usually um, when you are there I I did have cell service I had like tower service um, Wi-Fi was a little bit trickier um, I was lucky enough that my um, host mom did have Wi-Fi um, some of them don't though. Yeah, it's was, not a requirement. Yeah, it's not a requirement for them to have Wi-Fi. I would say though a lot of them are starting to get it, but don't definitely don't count on it. Um, okay. If you needed Wi-Fi, you could go to the main plaza and a lot of the places there um, have Wi-Fi, uh, such as Starbucks that's down there. And also uh, the, the school, you can go and use Wi-Fi at the school. Okay, cool. And then, um, 
another thing in some places if you have like a tower service that it can be a little spotty so uh, navigating around the city I depended I depended a lot on Google Maps and sometimes it would cut out in certain areas but uh, in other areas it would be stronger. Okay um, and then I just want to ask like the acceptance rate like I know obviously you have to put in an application and they have to accept you but like has anyone ever been denied or no? As I mean, as long as you you need to be um, in good academic standing. Yeah. Um, and you need to not have any uh, super egregious judicial infractions. But okay. as long as you're, you know, as long as you're, um, you know, you you're meeting those kinds of things, uh, this this program is not a particularly like yes yeah, hard program to get into. Okay. And then just my last one. So I know I mentioned earlier that I'd be interested in like splitting my time how, with the excursions. How would that work? Like, would I get to go on all of them or would it also split? I mean, because you only pay for one set of excursions, I think you would have to pick, but I, I'm okay. certain that you could probably pay the extra to do additional excursions. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Those are my questions. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Well, um, perhaps Professor Morris, would you be okay with sharing your email, uh, maybe in the chat, if they have any questions that they can reach out to you? Um, they're all thinking, just so you know, um, Leslie, that they're all thinking. Spring 2022, summer 2022. So they're all kind of thinking of the future, um, which is good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, um, if you want, and one day you're just curious about seeing more of it, how it works. When we had the opportunity to be there a couple of years ago, we took many focus from everything, from because sometimes students have simple questions. They are sometimes afraid of this. I want to know what the bathroom looks like because they think it's another planet sometimes. We have pictures of everything, what the streets look like, what the food looks like, what the families look like, okay? So this might give you some, you know, a more, a, a better feel of what's the atmosphere there and uh, uh, get you better prepared, okay? So just reach out and I'll be glad to set up, uh, you know, a Zoom meeting with you and show you some of those images, okay? And Frankie, would you be okay sharing your email as well as if they have questions more from the student perspective of what it's like? Yep, I can put it. Yep, I can put it in the chat. I also have a lot of pictures from my trip, so if you guys are interested, I can show you. Perfect. Thank you. And um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions after this meeting and. Um, yeah, hopefully we can make this work for you guys. Definitely take this opportunity. Like you're not gonna get this opportunity again. So I I would very much. It's good that you said either brought early on, Frankie, <laughs> too. Like you know, you never know what's gonna happen in the yep. future. <laughs> I'm glad I did it that summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. well, thank you guys again. You're very welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. It was good to see you again. Mm -hmm. Adios.